Because I think I said earlier, you know, just because we think it doesn't make it true. Mm. And and one of the great, I guess, falsehoods in, in this in this self development world is that we we're kind of led to believe, or we kind of think a lot of the time that we should have control over our thinking. You know, we should be able to only think positive thoughts. We should only have happy thoughts. And mm. you know, that's a bit like dieting. Kind of makes sense. It's just nobody can keep it up. Hello and welcome to the Mind Detox Podcast. Here, we're going to discover a new way to think, feel and heal while exploring our spiritual side. I'm your host, Sandy Newbigging, also known as the Mind Detox Monk, because, well, I'm a monk and a meditation teacher, and for the past 15 years or so, I've been working with people from around the world using a method that I accidentally created called Mind Detox. Mind Detox is all about curing the unconscious causes of physical, emotional or life issues. So stick around if something is going on in your body, emotions or life, and you don't know why. Because we'll be exploring the possible mind-based causes during this or an upcoming episode. As a monk who's written 12 books and meditated for thousands of hours, the topics of inner peace and living in the present moment will most likely be a thread that runs through many of our episodes. So stick around again if you want to stress less and be still more. This podcast includes highlights from my online club and academy meetings, expert interviews, guided meditations and more. All so that you can cure the cause and master peace. For today's episode, I share a chit-chat with Ali Campbell, world-renowned life coach, best-selling author, and NLP and hypnotherapy trainer. We talk about the optimum state for self-healing and life success. Stay tuned for his inspiring story about a late-night rendezvous with some ducks at an all-night gas station, and learn some simple strategies to reset your mindset. You're very welcome. It's an absolute pleasure and honour to to be here, especially with some of the other the other guys you've got joining you. So it's something quite special. How did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> they just said yes. So I was like, okay. <laughs> um, listen, uh, you are uh, known for being uh, one of the best life coaches in the world. You're known for your NLP training, your hypnotherapy training. Um, you're really you're, you're excellent in yourself. You've had some fantastic mentors as well in your lifetime. And with a recent book out on NLP. Yeah. Uh, and a bestseller. What's your bestseller called? Oh, bestseller's called Just Get On With It. Just Get On With It. Brilliant. Well, actually, I'll, I'll just title think... for a self-help book, right? <laughs> I'll just do that then and, <laughs> and, and stop with the long introduction. Uh... Oh, I was quite enjoying it. See, <laughs> <I> always... <laughs> right. no, I'll just get on with it. So um, with with NLP, I've got, I've got a bit of a background in that as well. And so I'm a bit, you know, it's... It's, I want to talk to you about being in the ideal state for self-healing and, and staying healthy. Um, and it's with, with NLP's going into that a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, and I, th- I, th- I think there's at least a couple of bits here. I think, you know, I think there's a conversation worth having about how we create state in ourselves. Um, because lots of us uh, live in, in a space where, you know, we, we, we always live in a way that the world or life happens to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we... we uh, sort of reflect on those states as if we have nothing to do with it. You know, so the yeah. state comes along and says, hey, and then we respond and go, and the state says, I didn't do it. And, and off it goes. So we, we create our states. Thought creates feeling. Feeling creates uh, action. Action creates outcome. Outcomes shape our lives. So there's, there's that part, which I think is a, a really worthwhile conversation for us to have. Mm-hmm. And, and the second part, I think, is, is, is understanding what we think of as the optimum state for wellness or the optimum state for healing or for optimum health. And, and that's where it gets really simple for me. Because for the longest time in, in NLP, you know, we look at how we create states and then how we can sort of manipulate that state. You know, if you're not feeling so good, well, you know, here's a pattern you can use, here's a technique to, to change your state, to change the way you feel. And hey, we can all live that that wonderful turbocharged life. And, mm-hmm. and that works for sure. 
The problem with false states like that, you know, where, say, in NLP, we might, you know, go inside, um, we can talk more about this, but go inside, change our state, and then try and, try and keep it up, is that there's something to be kept up. There's something we need to do in order to be okay. Exactly. And, and to me, that's, that, that works temporarily, but it's a false construct. Because actually, the thing we're missing in the, in the whole conversation there is our default setting is to be okay. Yeah. We come into the world okay. We come into the world well. We come into the world happy. We come into the world joyful, loving, giving, caring. And actually, what we should be looking for is the reset button. Yeah. You know, so when you, you know, read or some of my work with, with clients all dotted around the world is that I'm never really asking them or getting them to do anything new. I, I'm asking them to sort of go inside, find that, I don't know what you call it, like the restore factory settings button, you know, on your, on your mobile, your cell phone, and, and, and hit it and put things back to the way, to the way we are, to our own innate well-being. Well, we, we know how well it is if anything's uh, not working, we tend to, to get told to restart it. You right. know, like if, <laughs> if your laptop's ever not working, your first option is restart it. And yeah. you know what? Normally, that's all it needs, just to get it's back true. nine to, times out of ten. Uh, was it called a hard reset? Or something <laughs> yeah. like just get yeah. back to basics, get back to the natural state. And it really is this underlying state, which talk about in body calm, mind calm, all the stuff I've been trying to do with calm, stands for conscious awareness life meditation. It's this underlying quiet, Still silent. The, the the ongoing natural state is really what you're referring to. Is that right? Yeah, it's exactly it. it I think, mm. and I think many teachers have called it many things. Mm. Uh, you know, whether it's a non-attachment to you know to, to outcome or out, out the outside world. Whether in three principles we, we talk about it as as being mind, as being that state of connection, mm. in spirituality, and religion, and you know, many many teachers have have called it whatever. I suppose whatever language makes most sense to, to, to them at, at, at the time. Yeah. But it's an innate wellness. It's an innate well-being. It's an innate calm, uh, an innate sense that, that that's, that's sort of down here somewhere, you know, not, not up here. And, and, you know, it's, it's always like the problem for most people is they spend far too much time in their heads, not enough time in their bodies. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then look out, out at their life and say, well, how the hell did that happen? Yeah, exactly. You know what? There's, I don't know why, but there's a story that I hear, heard you sh- share once that I don't know how we're able to link it back to this, but it's coming up strongly for me to invite you to share. It's the one about the bird on the way to Glasgow. <laughs> Do you remember that story? The birds on the way to Glasgow. You see, I'm from Scotland, that could have so many connotations. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the feathered kind. Oh, was, those guys. All right. Okay. Was there not one you did about being, being near... Lock, it's being like in the car park or something. Uh, I, know, I know the story. The, 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 the story is actually, it's, it's turned out to be like, the, the, I think the favourite chapter of almost everyone from, from Just the Arm of It. Right, okay. It's, it's, the chapter's called, Are You a Duck on the M6? The M6 <laughs> up Waterway. Uh, in the, it links in the, the north of England to, to Scotland. I see. Um, and if any of you have ever watched any of my little videos I've been posting on, on, on Facebook recently, the ducks, t- uh, I now have a home here in Scotland, and, I, and of course I had to get ducks. So the, the ducks tend to make appearances in, in, you know, in random places now. But, but the story is this, I was, I was driving home one night, uh, very late, and had stopped for coffee. Pulled into this uh, motorway rest area, service area, and by the, by the car park there's a duck pond. There's a sort of concrete you know, hold filled with water and, and there's some ducks in it. And, and I was sitting having my coffee on my own, looking out the window, you know, eating a, a muffin or something. And kind of just, just in my head, just in my thinking, of, wow, those, those ducks have got like a really easy life. You know, because what happens is they, they swim around and then, uh, you know, a, a, a bus pulls in or a car pulls in and the ducks do their best sort of, I'm a hungry duck face. And, and, and people feed them. That was a terrible line on the up face, wasn't it? Um, people feed them, and then they, they just go back to swim around. And I thought, God, they've got an easy life. And then something caught my eye. And it was a, it was a picture on, on the wall. The, the area where the service station is is in the Lake District uh, in, in the UK, which is just one of the most beautiful areas, I think, anywhere in the world, and, and where Wordsworth wrote 
many of his you know amazing poems about the, the, the local landscape. And and you know, one of the most beautiful places that man has ever has ever seen. And I thought, you know what? Those dogs may have an easy life, but just over that hill, just over there is, is like Lake Windermere, Lake Grassland, duck heaven, duck nirvana. And they've got wings. <laughs> so so why are they why are they hanging out here? And it sort of got me thinking about, you know, just the way that, that many people approach their life. Yeah. It's, you know, we, we're content to, to hang out by the car park and take the scraps that are being thrown because maybe that's what we think we deserve, because maybe that's what we think our, our lot in the world should be. Well, because maybe we don't know that Lake Windermere is just over the hill. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we know it's there, we're just scared to try. Yeah. And you know, as you're, as you're sharing that, if you're finished, right? Yeah, sure. You know, as you as you share that, it, it kind of links back perfectly as to what we we're talking about earlier. You know, we we get used to being caught up in our thoughts. We get used to feeling our thinking all day. We get used to going up and down and being really tense and stressed. Yeah. When actually, just or should I say, just below that, yeah. there's there's like uh, stillness, like yeah. calm. Like calm, you know, like love, and uh, but we, but we're so you we, we you're right. We 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 first of all need to know that it exists, or at least someone come along and tell us. Look, by the way, do you know that Lake Love is just below the surface of this Lake <laughs> yeah, exactly. of Lake Lake Fear, <laughs> Highway <Yeah>. Fear, <laughs> is actually just 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 over here a little bit, just a little bit over in your attention. Yeah. You might find that uh, you can actually have a much nicer inner experience of life. Yeah, we're going to sit here and enjoy that for a little while, shall we? Yeah, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> and the thing is, that the, the thing about this is that it doesn't require you to do anything. Yeah. It's there. It's an innate love, an innate calm, an innate wellness. An innate, it's there in you. Yeah. The problem is we don't think it is. And so we get caught up in the in the waves. If we use the, 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 the lake analogy a little further, we get caught up in the choppiness of our thinking. Yeah. And drawn away from the stillness in in our heart, the stillness in our body. Exactly. And so we live the choppiness. And the thing is, it's a very um, <clears throat> it feels very real when you're in the mind because you're feeling your thinking. So it does feel very justified. And you know, it, when I first got told that the peace that you seek is inside you, that you are that, it's your innate nature. My first reaction, because I was in my head, was to actually get a bit pissed off. I've got to be honest. I was like, don't you tell me that I'm peace, because it's certainly not what I'm feeling. You don't know my, my you don't know my past. Yeah. You don't know what's going on in my life at the moment. Do not sit there on your meditation cushion and tell me that peace is who I really am. Yeah. So what's your, what would you say to someone that might challenge you that way? Yeah, you know, I was just about to say, you know, uh, maybe it was for Scottish Sunday, I don't know, but we were sort of like up for a fight most of the time, even when we were trying to find inner peace, <laughs> you know, and I, I really struggled with it, to be honest, I, I personally really struggled with the look inside for the answer that you're seeking, and, and I, because I, I could only look outside at the world and, and think that it was a cause-effect relationship that, that was going on, mm-hmm. and and so my, I suppose my challenge to it, my, my you know, thing I would guide people to do is... Is, is actually to just to stop. To allow themselves to slow down. You know, we, I often say that one of my jobs as a coach is, is to be a speed bump. You know, a, a sleeping policeman is to lie, is to, is to basically get in front of my client and slow them down long enough. You edited that. That they. <laughs> slow them down. <laughs> yeah. There's a breath there, fill it with whichever four letter words that you best. Slow down. Just slow them down long enough so they can, they can feel their stillness. Yeah. To get them out of their thinking. And and it's not something about doing more. You know, if you're striving to be happy, you're going about it in entirely the wrong way. Yeah. Because that's what happens when we do less on the outside and, and you know, and live more on the inside. It's, mm. So, I, you know, a lot of the time when I'm working with clients, I'm just helping them to slow down. I'm helping them to reconnect. Helping them to understand that they're living in the feeling of their thinking. That just because they think it doesn't make it true. Even though it might feel very real, as we both you know, said earlier. Just because you think it doesn't make it true. 
and, and help them to reset back to a, I guess, a, a, a more authentic, you know, we bring it back around to state. Yeah. Because the best state, the best you, is the most authentic you. Exactly. And, and you know, I think one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why um, people get sick with di- and dis-ease, you know, when they are stressed and, you know, feeling the thinking all the time is because it's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call to be, you know, if it was natural to hang out feeling or thinking all the time, it also wouldn't be so destructive, I don't believe. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's fair. If it was natural, then it wouldn't make people so tired and run down and affect the immune system and the all all the, all the rest of the systems in the body, you know, if it was natural. And I think that's what we, we we're talking here. The optimum state is the natural state, mm. you know, and you can enter it through, you know, meditation techniques like body calm. You can enter it just by taking a moment to stop. Now, that in and of itself can be a really scary thing because we're worried what we might find yeah. when we stop. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's uncomfortable to stop. But in and of itself, that worry is just a thought. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that creates a state, and then we live that state. It's exactly the same thing. Um, you see, the, the thing that, that made the penny drop, I think, for me, was, was this. It's like, it, we, in, in this modern world, we tend to use our bodies and our, and our minds it can, it can, contrary to what they were designed, the way they were designed. Yeah. We are designed to do more with our bodies and less in our heads. Uh, if you think about it, it's very, very simply. If you do put more load, more strain over a period of time on your body, it gets stronger. That's what happens when you go to the gym, right? It compensates, adapts, recruits muscle fibers and develops and copes and gets stronger and more able to deal with the task. Similarly, if you put yourself under sustained mental load over a period of time, we're not designed for that. We get weaker. We get more affected by that. Now that's not that's not failing in our part. We're just trying to run things the wrong way round. Yep. We just don't get it until someone maybe just points it out to us. Great. So in body cam, I've got a little technique called Gao for helping us to 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 quieten and get still. Uh, it stands for gently alert, awareness wide open. I thought we could do a swap. So I'll, I'll teach you that if you teach me one of yours. Is that all right? That works. Sounds fair? And then yeah, people listening can also get a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a, uh, uh, hopefully a couple extra little ways to, to enter the ideal optimum natural state. That sounds good. Yeah? yeah. So one of the easiest ways I find this is, this, is, is called GAWO, and it's, and it's affectionately called that, and it stands for Gently Alert. Awareness wide open. Gently alert. Awareness wide open. And so as you're looking ahead at the screen right now, mm-hmm. just let your awareness to open up a bit wider. You know, notice that before you were maybe holding a bit narrow and just let it open up wider to as wide as it na- naturally wants to rest. There you are. And so your awareness is left and right, up and down. And, and we're just taking in this, there you go, this wider this wider awareness. And as we're hanging out, just being gently alert, awareness wide open, there's no straining. You notice that? There's no trying. There's no controlling. It's actually the opposite. It was taking effort to hold attention narrow. And as we release that and rest into the wider awareness, which is already aware, the inner experience is quieter. Mm. <laughs> there's yeah. even, you know, you were already, uh, I could tell you were already lovely and still, but there's, it, it, it may be even just a little bit more obvious, even mm-hmm. uh, there's this quiet, still uh, spaciousness this, uh, that can be described as calm. And in this moment, we're also present because when we become consciously aware, we become present because the awareness which is aware is only ever aware of now occurring. Now we can we can put that on our mind and have the appearance of past and future and all that stuff, but the awareness is still always present. We are naturally innately present which is really good news and when we become consciously aware and present we start to experience what our awareness feels like no that's a really simple that's a really nice feeling yeah really nice stillness. yeah and that's the first step of of mind calm meditation also body calm meditation we we engage that lovely state 
that natural state. And then from there, we the mind is going to want to become busy at some point. It's used to doing stuff. Yeah. Because when the mind stills, the body stills. When the body stills, it starts to rest. When the body's resting, it starts to heal and release stress and stuff. When the body's healing and doing its healing work, it becomes active. But the mind and body are connected, so the mind becomes active too. So as we relax, as we quiet the mind, the mind will want to move at some point upon the healing that's occurring within the body due to the connection. Yeah. And so what we do is we give the mind something useful to do in the form of the body calm thoughts that uh, you'll know about because you read the book. Yeah. So that's, I'm, so that's, uh, that's my one. I'd love to, uh, is there anything, you know, from Three Principles or anything that you do that well, might what be I'm, What I'm thinking is, that just as, a, as an interesting exercise, is I'm going to try and, and, and now come to a place of, of, you know, some guidance that, that you can enjoy or you benefit from and anyone watching this, but without shifting my own state. So to, to come from, so you've nicely opened my awareness and I'm feeling very calm and centered. So I'm going to, I'm going to now try and, I suppose, guide from that place. Lovely. So in other words, not engage brain in terms of allow it to get busy, thinking, oh, I'm going to say next, I'm going to do this, and but actually stay in that, in that open awareness Lovely. space. Lovely. And, I, and I think to, to, to draw a nice contrast is I'm going to share just a, a, a little technique. It's around attachment. Because I, I think I said earlier, you know, just because we think it doesn't make it true. Mm. And and one of the great, I guess, falsehoods in, in this in this self development world is that we we're kind of led to believe, or we kind of think a lot of the time that we should have control over our thinking. You know, we should be able to only think positive thoughts. We should only have happy thoughts, and mm. you know, that's a bit like dieting. It kind of makes sense. It's just nobody can keep it up. So or wants to keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> so so what I'd like to do is 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 just to. To embrace the idea that your thoughts are going to come, and uh, regardless of whether you want them to or not, it's just like a, you know, if we turn on a, a radio right now, there's going to be stuff on. We didn't put it there. We don't really have control over what's there, but we tune in. It's on. Um, and if you'd like to, you know, if it's safe for for anyone watching this to do so, just close our eyes and just allow themselves to be still. Allow yourself to be still. And allow yourself just to let thought come to mind. Doesn't matter what it is, it's got no bearing on it whatsoever. You see, the bit that usually creates the state about thought is not the fact that we have the thought, it's the fact that we believe it. Or that that thought usually comes with that, and therefore that means, in other words, we make up a bit to make the thought make sense. You know, something simple like, I've run out of milk. You can very quickly turn into and what kind of what kind of parent does that make me? You know, I'm a bus member gets up on the way home. And before you know it, you're feeling your thinking when there was just a random thought about milk. So what I'd love to do is just allow thought to come to mind. I'm just gonna be still for I don't know, about a minute. But allow thought to come. Just acknowledge it as a thought about a thing. And just let it go. It doesn't mean anything. You don't have to do anything with it. You don't even have to pay any attention to sitting just passing through. It comes and it goes. Because thoughts are just thoughts. That's it. Just allow other thoughts to come. No, I just thought about it. And as you let it go, just allow yourself to drop that more out of your head into your body. More into that sense of stillness. Into that innate well-being. It's, it's always there. It's always calm below the waves. So allow yourself to drop down into that calm. Drop down into that stillness. That's all. Thought just becomes like a, you know, just a wind outside the window, or, or just a rushing noise in the back. On the inside, in your heart, you're always okay. And even if you do get caught in your thinking from time to time, 
to know that you're only ever one thought away from being well. You're only ever one thought away from being calm. You're only ever one thought away from being still. You're only one thought away from being most authentic. You are just the best. Whenever you're ready, just now you can just open your eyes and come back in. There we go. Nice. Hmm. Very nice. <sighs> It's funny doing the exercise like that. I find the mind is is quite like uh, when I say mind, I mean the thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite like a, a teacher in a in a classroom. Like the when the when the teacher fogs out and leaves the room, the students can get a bit rowdy and busy. But when the mm -hmm. teacher is really attentive, they tend to behave themselves more. Mm -hmm. And when you you're getting me through that, you're like saying the next thought. And and but with, because you're getting me in such a way that I'm being really attentive, they're there's naturally less thought anyway. Yeah. It's just the way it tends to be. Yeah. So the, the next step beyond that is to just set a timer yourself for a few minutes. Uh, and the reason I say set timers, I'll absolutely guarantee you, it's all, because it's almost like time slows down when you do this. Guarantee you after about a minute, you just don't know thought you, what the long have been doing this for? <laughs> right? So just set a timer for a few minutes and just, and just do it yourself. Just close your eyes, allow thought to come, allow it to go. Till the buzzer goes off. But what's happening is that you're no longer being so identified in your thoughts. You're not feeling your thinking so much. Yeah. And you're naturally just able to rest into the underlying stillness, which is the context of every thought anyway. Exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I can't believe the time's flown by already. We're already over time. But uh, I've, I've really enjoyed our chance to have a quick catch-up today. Likewise, Sandy. Thank you very much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure.